There is something quite special about a traditional pocket knife. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you three reasons why everyone should have at least one traditional pocket knife in their collection. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'll address the two issues a lot of people have with carrying and using traditional pocket knives and how you can remedy those issues. So guys, thanks for hanging with me today. I'm Aaron. This is Gideon's Tactical. Let's dive in. Now we all know that the knife is one of the original tools ever conceived by man, but you may not be aware that pocket knives find their origins all the way back around 500 BC, where you can find examples of pocket knives being made in both Austria as well as pre-Roman era Spain. And so since that time, man has been trying to come up with new and innovative ways to find out how to have a blade fold into the handle and for us, when we usually think of a traditional pocket knife, we think of examples like we're gonna to use today of say this Joker Cocker, come on, Cocker Spaniel guys, or Brenton. Oftentimes with very simple blade shapes is what you're gonna find. And then a lot of times you're gonna find a nice bolster area and then you'll see bone, antler, wood handles a lot of the time. And they will usually either have a slip joint mechanism, meaning there's no lock or a lock back design. And two things that traditional pocket knives lack is any form of a pocket clip. You might luck out like this one and get a lanyard hole and you will lack any form of one handed deployment. It's a two handed pinch pull deployment on a traditional style pocket knife. So now that we've got the basic concept of what a traditional pocket knife design is, here's the first reason why everyone should have one of them in their collection and it's their capability. Traditional pocket knives have more capability across different applications than almost any other pocket knife design. And here's why you see most modern pocket knives are designed with one or two purposes in mind, and they lag and fall way short in their capability in other applications. As an example, here's a double edged dagger style OTF. Excellent for a self defense role. Eh, maybe a little EDC opening a package here and there, but that's what this is designed for. I'm never going to take this on a hunting trip to go fishing, backpacking, camping, and just doing general utility. There are better designs out there. On the converse, I have this huge cold steel pocket knife, massive broad blade, huge handle, excellent ergonomics, super thick lock back design, ideal for hard use in the backcountry, camping, just really hard worker, but it's a brute in the pocket and I'm not taking this on a quick run over to the grocery store or a night out on the town. And who doesn't like a light duty EDC like this mini bug out? It's very easy to carry, it's slim and very lightweight, but it doesn't have the durability for me to take on say a camping trip or to the job site. And that's where traditional pocket knives really have a leg up because of not only their handle, but their blade. The blades are often designed to do a lot of different tasks rather well with good drop points, oftentimes clip points that will be able to pierce and penetrate material very easily. But in this case, having a flat grind, full flat grind, or oftentimes hollow grinds allow for a lot of good, not only utility work, cordage cutting material like you might find on a job site, as well as food prep at your camp kitchen or your kitchen at home. And I've yet to come across a traditional pocket knife that did not excel in the outdoors. So the blade portion of most traditional pocket knives means that they are excellent at a lot of different tasks. Now, as we're talking about traditional style and pocket knives, I'm sure you guys are probably eyeballing this traditional style jacket and asking yourselves, where did you score that at? This American made Flint and Tinder unlined waxed trucker jacket I scored through today's sponsor, which is Huckberry. And it's excellent to have Huckberry as part of our affiliate network and a regular sponsor here at the channel because they carry gear and equipment just like this jacket, which is built out of New Jersey sourced waxed seven ounce sailcloth that is water resistant, breathable and lightweight. As an example, I've been wearing this in July and it keeps the elements out and it keeps me cool. Right now when I'm filming this video, it's 76 degrees and I'm not breaking a sweat, making it perfect for adventures in the outdoors, a day at the job site or a night out. 
And so guys, regardless if it's this jacket or other gear and equipment in general, I invite you to check out the link in the description below this video over to Huckberry. And don't forget about my exclusive promo code, which can take 10% off your very first purchase. So check out the description below, check out what Huckberry's got going on and see all that they have to offer. The second aspect are the handles. Traditional pocket knives are often much thicker than your modern ultra slim, ultra light pocket knives and tend to have very natural and organic styling to them, which means that they are very comfortable to use for extended cutting tasks. Many modern pocket knives are great for a quick cut through the Amazon package that just arrived or doing something really quick without a lot of pressure being put on the knife for an extended period of time. Traditional pocket knives are designed to be used and held for extensive work. They are working knives. They're designed to work and they feel really good in the hand. More often than not, you're going to find a good comfort level and they're going to feel a lot better in the hand. They don't have those pocket clips that can often cause hot spots, and it's going to end up feeling like you're holding an organic fixed blade for extended cutting tasks. So you will find that most traditional pocket knives will not only have a blade shape that can accomplish more tasks in an easier fashion than a lot of modern pocket knives, and the handle ergonomics are going to outperform in comfort and grip most other modern blades. Now, the second reason that everyone should have a traditional pocket knife in their collection is pretty obvious. It's feel and style. Listen, I like bright colors as much as the next guy, but so many modern pocket knives nowadays look like a minty fresh stick of gum or a slice of a tangerine. And oftentimes chasing how lightweight the design can be means that you get a very synthetic, 3D printed polymer factory vibe and feel to your pocket knives. Whereas when you pick up a traditional style blade, you have a lot of materials that don't feel necessarily man-made and oftentimes are natural. You have bone that comes from nature, or in this case, this wood with pins in and that metal bolster up front, steel liners throughout. So the structure is excellent and the style fits in at 10,000 feet at an alpine lake as you're prepping to fillet a fish or when you're going on a night out at the town and going to enjoy a meal with your significant other. And so the majority of those traditional pocket knives aren't going to feel chintzy and kind of out of place in different environments, but goes across the spectrum of environments and looks classy and gives style in those environments without sacrificing its durability and longevity of use. Now, the third reason that everyone should have a traditional pocket knife in the collection is value. It's so easy to spend an arm and a leg on modern pocket knives. Yes, they're gonna have excellent blade steels, but this little guy is over $150. And yes, this Spyderco has S35 VN steel, but it's made in China and just has plastic handle scales and they're right around $100. Whereas most traditional pocket knife designs can be scored at very minimal cost. As an example, Joker hooked me up with these Spanish made knives over a year ago and the price hasn't fluctuated at all. And these will come in on Amazon around $30 to $40, depending on the handle variant that you decide to go with. A traditional styled French made Opinel can be scored for under 20 and the American made buck 110 and 112 series can be picked up for around 60 to 70 bucks. So it's encouraging to see that in today's economy, you can score American or European made traditional pocket knives for oftentimes well under $50 and definitely under a hundred. Now, before I address the two main hangups that people have with traditional pocket knives and how to overcome them, there has to be compromise somewhere, right? I mean, we're hitting so many good aspects of what a traditional pocket knife offers. The one detractor oftentimes is in the steel quality. You can find some premium steels in the traditional styles, but more often than not, you're gonna find pretty budget-friendly carbon and stainless steel options. As an example, the two jokers we've been looking at in this video, I have 1.4116 stainless steel, um, which is the same stainless steel you're going to find basically on like Victorinox, Swiss Army knives, and a lot of other budget-friendly European-made tools. It's Rockwell 55 to 57, so it's a pretty soft steel. From my experience, it's 
about what you would get out of like an basic 8CR. It means that it's very easy to resharpen. It's rather rust resistant. In fact, I accidentally left both of these out in the rain and have zero rust spots on them but they're just not going to hold their edge like those 100 or 150 dollar more modern pocket knives with more modern steels so you just have to be mentally prepared to resharpen your traditional pocket knives on a more regular basis and guys i'll have links in the description below to some of my favorite traditional pocket knives including all the ones you're seeing in this video now how about those two difficulties to using and carrying a traditional pocket knife number one is deployment the fact that you do have to pinch and pull and use two hands to usually open and then disengage the lock just means that you have to put down tools or items that you might be cutting or working with to deploy and then to put away. So if you want to remedy that, there are a few manufacturers that make screw on thumb plates and or thumb studs that I've been using for years. This is the quick brand i think each model goes for around eight to ten dollars last i checked they just screw in i've never lost one uh, had one fall off or really damage the back spine that much maybe if you have a super maybe uh sentimental one you know think twice but they work great i have a little bit of jimping on them i have them on my gerber gator there on this particular buck ranger and it you can get them in all different colors so that is a simple inexpensive way to then make the, at least the deployment one-handed on those traditional pocket knives. The second drawback is carrying it. How do you carry a traditional pocket knife? Many do not come with any sheath at all. Thankfully, the Buck series of 110s and 112s does, and that's a very good leather sheath option. But many, like the Jokers we've been looking at today, come with no option. You just throw it in a pocket. Now, obviously, that's one way to go, and depending on the size, you could even put it in like a fifth pocket, and because they are more traditional with uh, more, I won't say difficult, but slow actuator, um, means that you don't really have to worry about them opening up in your pocket. And so you just throw them down in there. But if you do want the option to carry them on a sheath on your belt and the pocket knife that you're looking at doesn't come with it, there are tons of excellent aftermarket leather sheaths that you can usually score for about the cost of the knife. As an example, this Benchcraft series, they have all sorts of different variants, goes for about $30. It's an American made leather sheath. And if you get the 110 design series, that should easily fit the Cocker from Joker, as well as several other kind of more larger 110 size. And then you can also look at many different aftermarket areas, including eBay, where I picked up this cross draw option that not only fits my 112, but also fits my 110 and this Joker. And there's a company called Hide and Drink that I've used several of their leather pouches for different traditional style pocket knives like this smaller joker so i hope a few of these ideas have helped you maybe overcome some of the issues you've had with deployment or carrying certain traditional pocket knives that you've had in the past and i'll have those also in the links in the description below this video so there you have it guys three reasons why everyone needs to have at least one traditional pocket knife in their collection and i look forward to hearing from you guys what's your favorite style and design of traditional pocket knife leave a comment below Below. And if you guys have any questions or maybe points that I didn't hit that you want to address, please leave a comment below. I look forward to hearing and responding to all of your guys' thoughts. I appreciate you so much for coming over today and spending time with me. I invite you to check out the other video popping up and again to subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.